this, I don't have cool pictures. What I have is a little bit of interactivity. So let me start with this. What is, oh, actually, this is moving a lot slower than every 14 seconds. Or is it really just moving that much faster when I'm actually up on two? Okay, what are the two biggest urban issues? Anyone, shout them out. Crime, crime. Okay. This is old. Wow, this is... I'm thinking public safety. I'm really thinking public safety. There we go. Okay, all right. And the second? Education. For, for those of you who didn't get this one easy, just check out the campaign paraphernalia of anybody running for local office. These are pretty obvious. Okay, now, generally speaking, one of these gets a little bit more attention than the other. Which one do you think that's going to be? Public safety. Public safety. I'm just going to get a little bit ahead of my slides, but I think that's okay, because eventually I'll have too much to say and not enough slide time. Um, why do you think that's the case? Because everybody thinks they're affected by public safety, but a lot of people don't think they're affected by education. Let's say they're right, just for the heck of it. Um, if, um, if, if public safety is really the important thing that we should be worrying about and concentrating on, then we should be concentrating on preventing crime. Now, preventing crime should follow the same pattern as solving it, which is you take the root elements, you identify them, and then you eliminate them proactively. You make sure those things that are going to cause crime don't happen. Now, uh, anybody out there watch CSI or Law and Order or any of these crime play shows? What what are the what are the root elements of crime? Monkeys. When you're solving a, when you're trying to solve a crime, what three things are you looking for? Let's do this alphabetically. Means, motive, and All right, this is the only time opportunity is a bad thing, when it's the opportunity to commit a crime. Okay, now let's start thinking about how government works to rule these three things out. How, do, how does government rule out the means? How do we reduce means, eliminate the means of the crime? Well, except for some sort of, uh, I guess, some assault rifles and some grenade launchers, um, which are which are hard to get, um, government doesn't really keep people from having the means to commit a crime. Guns, regular guns, knives, bare fists, these are the weapons of choice for most crime, and they're widely available. So that means we should be looking at something else, maybe motive. And what does government do to reduce or eliminate motive? Nothing. No, 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 it's not nothing. <laughs> we, we have rec centers, we have after school programs, we have all sorts of things that are supposed to help keep kids from wanting to be criminals in the first place. Okay. Now, how do we eliminate or reduce opportunity? You're, you're about to see the one thing that the Baltimore City Police Department does. It reduces opportunity. It causes people who are already criminals to go, maybe not here, or maybe not now. But that's what the police department is good at, cutting down on opportunity for crime. Now, in 1990, about 20 years ago, and coincidentally, one of the first budgets I worked on in City Hall when I was a staffer, um, we spent $165 million trying to convince criminals not here. And we spent $37 million trying to keep kids from becoming criminals with the Rec and Parks Department. This year, how much do you want to think we spent on the police department? A trillion dollars. The, the overall city budget has doubled in 20 years. And the police department's budget has just a little bit more than doubled in that same period of time. Rec and parks? Smaller. 10% smaller. And that's because in the mid-90s, it was cut down as low as $22 million. 
now, so, so, so the recent mayors have actually given it the same increases each year as other departments, but they're so far behind they can't catch up. Now, how did this happen? Well, there's some very horrible budget realities, um, and there's also some demographics involved and some voting patterns involved. The budget reality is that the general fund makes up about half of the budget, and that's the only part of the city's budget where the mayor and city council can actually determine how much, of, you know, all, we can put all of this money into whatever we want. There's no motor vehicle fund requirements or anything like that. What gets paid for out of the general fund is fire and police, solid waste, so your trash pickup, um, or if you have a neighborhood that needs it, your alley cleanings, um, water and wastewater, libraries, and rec and parks. Now, when times get tough, what do you think is going to get cut? In the original version, only rec and parks shrinks. Okay. <laughs> Can I just say how much I love Apple? All right. Okay. All right, but moving right along. So how does demographics matter in something like this? I'm going to say something a little plain spoken for your average elected official, but the truth of the matter is most criminals tend to be younger and most victims tend to be older. And not just victims of homicide, but victims of all crimes together tend to be older. Now, then this takes us to the next step, voting patterns. What do most voters tend to be? Older. <laughs> That's coming. Um, most voters tend to be older, and most voters, tend, most older voters tend to either actually have been victims of crime or spend a lot of time being afraid of being victims of crime. And so they vote their fears. Last year, it was great. We voted our hopes, but that was the first time in a long time, and we got to keep that going. Um, what needs to change? This is I struggled with for a little while, but it appears that what needs to change is government because government is who has been doing this for the last 20 years and this is what they have been doing. Now, I, I came across a very easy statistic to find, which is on the national level, if, um, if you ask around, you see everybody likes their congressman, but nobody likes Congress. Um, so, as a result, they keep sending their congressman, and nothing changes. Um, now, but I'm not just gonna I'm not just gonna point fingers at Washington because that's easy. The tr ooh, that's 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 unpleasant. Okay, what's 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 going on here is that if you. Okay, there we go. If you go back to the last city council race, there were there are 15 members of the council. Effectively, in that race, there were 13 incumbents, two open seats, one of which I was running for. And the, of the 13 incumbents, 12 of them were reelected. That's a higher incumbency rate than Congress. Now, the next couple slides cover a lot of basic statistics in terms of things like how many people didn't vote, what a ridiculously low percentage of the actual registered voters most winning council people actually got. I mean, I, I'm one of six council people who got less than 3,000 raw votes in a district with 44,000 people living in it. Um, so, here's what I'm going to talk about instead of those slides. What I'm going to talk about is why this needs to change and why Hypocrisy is a big part of it. I went to a rally just this weekend for Voices Against Violence where it was all the people who were speaking at it watching the rally. We were literally talking to ourselves. We have a lot of times where we have big rooms like this where everybody in the room talks about the importance of investing in our youth and the importance in investing in tomorrow and developing that. And then we go home to our individual homes and get scared, and we look out the window at those same kids that we're talking about, and we don't pick up the phone and call the mayor and say, you need to put more money into recreation. We don't pick up the phone to our council person and say, you have to do that. We call the police, and we say, get these kids off my corner, because they're scaring me. And government responds to that. And I can't convince anybody else, well, hardly anybody else in City Hall, that that's different, unless people start 
making different phone calls. So my official five minutes is up, but I want you to know I'm going to keep talking about this to anybody who wants to listen to it, with either after here or call me or email me, because I'm going to keep talking about it until we do something about it. Thank you.